Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. I want to thank John Santos for joining us. He's with Urban Green, uh, Greens Market up on Cranston Street. There's a lot of debate up at the State House on a proposed piece of legislation to put tax on sugary beverages. And the money would go to help hunger issues and help get fresh fruit and flowers uh, to those who need it. John Santos, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, well, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity to speak on this important issue. So, John, you've been in the, in the supermarket business uh, for a long time. You've worked at a number of different uh, organizations. Talk about what you've learned in the past about, you know, sugary products, sugary beverages specifically, who buys them and what the problem is with them. Sure. So this is a, a very competitive platform. The... Um, or a competitive category, uh, with the soda companies really leading the charge on this. So when we talk about sugary beverages, we're really talking about the impact of soda and how they dominate the retail sales floor. Uh, whether it's coolers that are positioned at the registers that limit the customer's options, uh, you know, you're not going to step out of line when you're, uh, you know, you're, you're thirsty, you're going to reach over and that cooler that's right in front of you that's what you're going to reach into. And there's a Coke or a Pepsi versus water. Um, that's your option. Uh, the other thing you need to know about this industry is the gross profit margins are very low within soda. We, we make our money in retail with, with regards to soda. We make it on programs. So what they do is they incentivize growth over the previous year. So if you're a retailer and you want to make the necessary profit to operate, you have to sell more soda this year than you did last year in order to gain any profit on that. So this, the way that this is structured is very much a, in favor of the soda industry. They dominate the landscape. Think about when you walk into a big box retailer, you see 40 feet of soda. You know, what else, who else has that kind of control? So they own the landscape. They, own, they, they position themselves in a way that limits the customer's access to healthier choices. Not that customers wouldn't buy those healthier choices if they were in front of them, but that's what they've got to pick from. And that's how, they corner the, that's how they've cornered the market on this. Well, listen, I mean, we all know what the soda companies do to push, whether it's Super Bowl ads or every scoreboard in every high school field, uh, football field across the country, uh, Coke or Pepsi is there to sponsor that signage and promote those beverages. And in many cases, they're promoting those beverages as being, a, as being healthy. And we know that that sugar consumption has an adverse effect on obesity and diabetes, uh, of course. John, talk about, you know, when you go into a traditional supermarket, they've, they've bought, through slotting fees, miles and miles of that mile. Is there anybody else in a supermarket that has as much footage uh, on an aisle as the uh, soda companies? No, there, there is nobody that has the dominance. And it's even it's e an even bigger issue than that, because these guys have been diversifying into other areas of the retail space to offset what they what they know to be the upcoming changes in, 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 in the customer's demand for sugary beverages. The, with the um, explosion in, in regular water and in seltzer water, these guys are these guys are leading the charge there too. So, the, you know, no one's going to dispute the health benefits of drinking water versus soda. The real the real argument in on the landscape with regards to this bill is the impact on jobs. And when you think about this, um, what happens is that these soda companies have been diversifying. They have been expanding into other products because they know this is coming. All this bill does is light a fire under their butts and, and prevents them from dragging their feet. They, they, they've known about this drive. They've been working this in this direction. Uh, and again, there's nobody that's going to argue the health benefits of drinking non-sugary beverages versus drinking sugary beverages. Uh, John, talk about this a little bit. Um, talk about how important getting some incentives and disincentives into the supermarket. It, it, you know, it, this is such a complex thing. We all know about obesity. Rhode Island ranks 11th in the country for childhood obesity. We're after states like Arkansas and Mississippi. I mean, uh, Massachusetts in comparison is 41st. How do we get, you're up on Cranston Street next to Wiggins Village. Um, you know, you're, you're on the 
traditional South Side. Uh, talk about how to help people make better choices. Well, I, I, you know, you touched on a really important issue that uh, the folks in the industry understand. So when you, when you have a produce department, let's say you're a bodega or a little convenience store that's servicing a, 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 a very diverse neighborhood that doesn't have access to a lot of options when it comes to shopping. Uh, you, you as the operator are, are hesitant to offer a lot of fresh produce because when you do that, you open yourself up to, to loss. It's a lot easier for a convenience store operator or a bodega to offer processed foods and things that have a long shelf life and don't require the care. So, and when they do carry fresh produce, they have to charge a lot of money for it just to offset those losses. So by incentivizing the snap purchase of produce, what they're doing is they're making it easier for an operator in, a, in, a, in potentially a, a very food sensitive area, nutritionally, a nutritionally high value food sensitive area to take a chance and carry a little bit more produce because his customers are gonna be looking for it because they're gonna, they're gonna be tooled to be able to buy it. You know, so that's a huge component. Now that doesn't just work for the little guy, that also works for big bucks. You know, when you think of where stores get their reputation, they don't, no one walks into a supermarket and says, man, I love the Rice Krispies here, or I love the peanut butter here. They talk about the meat department, the produce department, the bakery department. There's a reason why those, those, those uh, departments are around the perimeter of the store. It makes a customer travel into those departments and travel throughout the entire store to be able to, um, to do their shop. So by incentivizing the, the purchases of produce, you're helping every grocery retailer control losses. So from an from a operator's perspective, incentivizing the purchase of produce is way better than, uh, than incentivizing the purchase of potato chips. Yeah, John, listen, I judge a market by how well they can cut prosciutto. That's really the only thing that matters to me, okay? Sure, I'm a simple sure, sure. man with simple desires. John, I, I wanna thank you. This is a big bill up at the legislature. The uh, beverage industry is pulling out all the stops and on the flip side, uh, health organizations and nutrition organizations are trying to fight back and try and get this pushed. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time from your busy day at the market to join us on Go Local Live. Please stay healthy and congratulate, congratulations on all the success success you've had at the market up there on Cranston Street. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And I just want to say in closing, no one's losing any jobs over this bill. People are just getting healthier. I hope everybody steps forward and, and, and does the right thing for our children and for our community and for business. Thank you. Thank you, John. For everybody else, stay tuned. We'll have Dr. Michael Fine at 1.30, the former director of health. We'll take a look at all the numbers and some of the concerns coming out of India related to that explosion of coronavirus cases. Stay tuned for much more on Go Local. And listen, my daily plea, wear your mask. Please get vaccinated. It's beautiful outside. Let's all have a great Rhode Island summer. Everybody's got to get vaccinated. Thanks, everyone.